Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Orwell, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, as you can tell, I'm not really in a good mood right now. You see, as most of you know, this year is considered to be the year of dogs. And because of that, I've been thinking about blogging a few dog movies this year. So, you might be wondering why I'm angry. Well, originally, I was planning to blog Isle of Dogs. But because Fox has decided to release the movie on 27 screens all over the U.S., I can't blog the movie until it gets released to home media. And because Huey Toomore gave me the memo on Facebook, instead, I'll be looking at an animated dog movie that he looked at. One of the films he looked at was Bolt, and while this movie is good, I'll save this one for another time this year. But what about the other dog film that he reviewed? Does it still hold up? Well, let's find out. Released on November 17, 1989, the movie is All Dogs Go to Heaven. Now let's get started. In this animated feature, canine casino owner Charlie Barkins is killed by his business partner Carface, but returns to Earth from Heaven thanks to the powers of a magical, rewindable watch. Charlie sets out to take his revenge on Carface by means of an elaborate plan that involves a little orphan girl named Anne Marie. But as the plan progresses, Charlie discovers that Anne Marie is being exploited by Carface. Charlie must decide whether to change his mission from one of revenge to one of rescue. So, what do I personally think of this movie? Well, this is another movie that I loved from my childhood, and even though the movie got $21.1 million out of its $13.8 million budget, it was outgrossed by Disney's A Little Mermaid, which sounds like another good idea for me to blog this year. Hmm, maybe in May. But anyway, let's move on to Mustang Notes, and see why I enjoy this underrated dog movie. The earliest idea for the movie was conceived by Don Bluth after he finished working on The Secret of Nim. The treatment was originally about a canine private eye and one of three short stories making up an anthology film. However, Bluth's first studio, Don Bluth Productions, was going through a period of financial difficulties, ultimately having to declare bankruptcy, and the idea never made it beyond rough storyboards. The concept was revived by Bluth, John Pomeroy, and Gary Goldman, and rewritten by David N. Weiss, collaborating with the producers from October through December 1987. They built around the title all Dogs Go to Heaven, and drew inspiration from films such as It's a Wonderful Life, Little Miss Marker, and A Guy Named Joe. The film's title came from a book read to Blute's fourth grader class, and he resisted suggestions to change it, stating that he liked how to provocative it sounded, and how people reacted to the title alone. During the production of their previous feature films, Sullivan Blute Studios had moved from then Noyce, California, to a state-of-the-art studio facility in Dublin, Ireland, and the film was their first to begin production wholly at the Irish studio. It was also their first to be funded from sources outside of Hollywood. The previous two films were An American Tale and The Land Before Time, which had been backed up by um, Emblem Animation and Universal Studios, and 
Executive producers Steven Spielberg and George Lucas exercised a degree of control over the content of the films. A situation Bluth found disagreeable. The studio found investment from UK-based Goldcrest Films in a US $70 million deal to produce three animated feature films. The three founding members of the studio, Bluth, Pomeroy, and Goldman, had all moved to Ireland to set up a new facility, but during the film's production, John Pomeroy returned to the U.S. to head up a satellite studio, which provided some of the animation for the film. Pomeroy also used his presence in the U.S. to generate early publicity for the film, including a presentation at the 1987 San Diego Comic Con. Oh, bonus fact. This movie inspired a theatrical sequel, a TV series, and a holiday direct-to-video film, which I may or may not blog. Well, anyway, let's move on to the animation. And to me, the animation for this movie is criminally underrated. Also, since this movie takes place in New Orleans, like The Princess and the Frog, it brings back memories of when I visited this city back in December 2015, and summer 1998. I also like how this movie captures the 1939 era. Also, the animal races in this movie are pretty neat in my eyes, and there are several humorous moments in this movie too. However, despite the fact that this movie is meant for children and families, I'm surprised that this movie includes gangsters, gambling, gunplay, and death. Like when Charlie gets run over by a car, and so on. But there is one scene in the movie that scarred me as a kid. It's the scene where Charlie has a nightmare about going to hell, and meets a demonic winged version of Charon, a pack of little demon dogs that bite at him, and a dog version of Satan, whom Huey names Mutt Fisto. Which I find is a clever name for a devil dog, since I call the Red Bull in The Last Unicorn El Rosso. Plus, while this scene is traumatizing, it's not as scary as Toaster's Nightmare from The Brave Little Toaster. Now here's where we come to the music and songs. In total, there are seven songs featured in this movie, but I want to talk about five of them. The first song in the movie is You Can't Keep a Good Dog Down, sung by Charlie and Itchy, while Charlie explains his lucky life. In my opinion, this is an entertaining bar song, though... One part of it is a little bit racist. Next we have Let Me Be Surprised, sung by Charlie and a whippet angel named Annabelle, voiced by Melba Moore. Now, this is a very relaxing song, and I really like how heaven looks. It's very beautiful with it being mostly cloudy, showing a lion and a few lambs, as well as having a watch department where everyone's lives are represented. And if someone attempts to wind their own clock, they get sent back to Earth. Plus, I think Annabelle is a very sweet angel while giving Charlie a tour around heaven. Plus, at the end of the movie, she gives Charlie a second chance to come back to heaven after he sacrificed himself to save Anne-Marie. However, there is one little flaw with Annabelle. It's when Charlie first meets her, she says that all dogs go to heaven because, unlike humans, dogs are good, loyal, and kind. Which 
doesn't make any sense since we did see a dog murder Charlie before he was sent to heaven. The next song is What's Mine Is Yours, which is a song that Charlie sings while teaching Flo's children to share pizza. To me, this is a very adorable song, especially when the puppies sing like a chorus. Next is Soon You'll Come Home, sung by Anne Marie while she wishes to live with Harold and Kate in the future. To me, this song is really sweet. Plus, it's also very tear jerking. And I like the photos that are shown throughout the song. Finally, we have Let's Make Music Together, sung by a flamboyant alligator named King Gator. Voiced by blues singer Ken Page, who would later voice Oogie Boogie in The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, I understand that this song inspired a trope known as due to the fact that this song is something that no one would expect. Plus, after this song is over, nobody brings it up again, despite the fact that King Gator does appear during the final climax to rescue Charlie and eat Carface. But, aside from that trope, this, this song is pretty over the top, but still catchy nonetheless. Because it feels like a Broadway song choreographed like Cirque du Soleil. And now, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Charlie Barkins, is voiced by Burt Reynolds. Whom I remember from the Cannonball Run and Boogie Nights. Charlie is a brash German Shepherd mix and a former con artist. Fun fact. The character was designed specifically with Reynolds in mind for the role, and the animators mimicked some of his mannerisms. The model for the character of Charlie was a German Shepherd appropriately named Bert. Bert the dog often spent time with the animators at the studio, even going with them during the studio's move to Ireland. Anyway, in my opinion, while Charlie is planning to get back at Carface after he escaped heaven, Charlie can be selfish, roguish, and hot-headed, and menacing at times. But... With his time spent with Anne Marie, despite originally exploiting her for his selfish needs, he began to warm up a lot more, even going far as to sacrifice his own life for hers after the final showdown with Carface at the climax of the movie. Charlie's best friend, Itzy Itchaford, is voiced by the late, great Dom DeLuise. whom I talked about before in my blogs of Oliver and Company and the two American Tale films. Now, Itchy is a paranoid, anxious, but loyal Dashund, and he's my favorite character in the movie. The only time he shows true courage is when his friends are in danger and can even show aggression when necessary. Also, I like the part where Itchy rounds up all the dogs of New Orleans for help, which kind of reminds me of the Twilight Bark from 101 Dalmatians. This adorable little girl is Anne-Marie, voiced by the late Judith Barcy, whom I talked about before when I blogged the first Land Before Time movie, and... It's really sad that this was Judith's last film role before her mentally insane dad killed her and her mom back in 1988. 
The end credits song, Love Survives, sung by Irene Cara and Freddie Jackson, was dedicated to her memory. And to me, this song is just so beautiful. Anyway, Anne Marie is a young orphan girl with the ability to talk to and understand animals. Pretty similar to most children in movies and books. Anyway, in my opinion, Anne Marie is really adventurous, innocent, and sweet. Throughout the movie, she dreams of being adopted by a good family. She also gets disappointed when Charlie makes bad choices, such as stealing, gambling, and telling fibs. However, the part where she catches pneumonia made my heart almost shatter. But I'm happy that her dream came true when Harold and Kate adopted her at the end of the movie. Next, we come to Charlie's former business partner and the movie's main antagonist, Carface, voiced by the late Vic Tabak. This was Tabak's final film role before his death in 1990. Anyway, Carface is a violent, sadistic, mixed American pit bull terrier slash bulldog gangster. To me, Carface is a downright heartless jerk. And all the stuff he does throughout this movie, like getting Charlie thrown into a city pound, getting him drunk, pushing a car to run him over, using Anne Marie's gift to become successful, attempt to shoot Charlie with a ray gun, beat up Itchy, and burning down Charlie's casino is really unforgivable. Carface's hench dog, Killer, is voiced by Charles Nelson Riley. Who got to be in Rockadoodle and a troll in Central Park? Killer is a misnamed fidgety, neurotic, and spectacles wearing snoodle. This guy is pretty similar to Itchy, but he is more of a bumbler. However, while he does do Carface's bidding, the only time he redeems himself is when he helps rescue Anne-Marie from his boss's sinking ship. Now, I've already talked about King Gator and Annabelle, so let's move on to Flo. Voiced by Lonnie Anderson. Flo is a female rough collie and Charlie's girlfriend. She has many puppies whom she watches over at their residence at an old church. They are deemed by Charlie to be some of the poorest people he ever know. To me, while she doesn't have that many scenes, Flo is a very caring, humble, and compassionate character. Plus, I think her children are really cute. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, despite a few flaws, All Dogs Go to Heaven is a really entertaining movie. And it's an underrated film to come from Don Bluth's library. The animation is great, while being reminiscent to 1939 New Orleans. And it can be dark at times, no surprise since this movie was from the 80s. The main characters like Charlie and Itchy, while sometimes unlikable, have charm, especially with Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise voicing them. Anne Marie is an adorable child, and it's sad that this movie was Judith Barcy's last film she acted in before she was murdered. And the villain Carface is a really nasty gangster dog. Also, the songs in this movie are really nice to listen to. If you folks want to share this movie with your children, do so. 
It's a movie that fans of 80s animated movies, or even Dogs or Don Bluth fans should watch at least once. I give this movie an 89% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where we look at a sequel to a movie that I blogged three years ago. Mustang Power. Ruler of the nations, king of all creation, he's the Lord of all. Giver of salvation, live to celebration to the Lord of all.